Google Docs is an online word processor. It's essentially the Google equivalent of Microsoft Word, but it's free. Free at last, free at last. It's a very basic tool. However, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you 10 hacks that can help you take your Google Docs to the next level. Hack number one is for creating a new doc. There are several different ways you can create a new doc. Within Google Drive, I can always click new and then select Google Docs. I could go to the Google Docs homepage and create a new one from there. I can even select it from my Google Apps up here, scroll down to where docs are. But personally, I think all of those take a little too long. I really love to create a new doc right in my address bar. So you can click in your address bar, type in docs.new, hit enter, and it will automatically generate a new Google Doc and have it saved to your Google Drive. Now you will notice it's gonna automatically dump it in the main part of my Google Drive and being the organizational person that I am, that's not gonna fly for me. I can always click and drag it within Google Drive or right click and move it within Google Drive, but I can also do that right from the Google Doc itself. I can go to File, come down to Move, and then from here I can select the folder where I want it to go. Hack number two is voice typing, also known as talk to text. Voice typing is a tool that allows you to orally dictate something and your microphone will pick up on your words and Google Docs will automatically turn it to text. So in order to access it, you're gonna click on tools, come down to voice typing, it's going to create that little window on your screen. You're gonna click the microphone, speak, and click it again in order to end it. So here's what that would look like. This is an example of me using voice typing, period. You will notice it's not perfect. It capitalized the word voice. I'd have to go in and correct that, but you can dictate punctuation like period, exclamation mark, question mark, and you can tell it to start a new line and a new paragraph. You also have access to different languages. So if you have any students that are not fluent in English, this might be a helpful tool. Where mine says English US, you can click the drop down and you can select from a whole host of languages. But in addition to that, this is a really helpful tool for students who maybe just aren't as motivated to write or are really slow typers. This can definitely help speed up the process. And also from the teacher perspective, if you're multitasking and maybe your hands are busy organizing papers, you can utilize this tool to still be getting typing done. Or you know how you get like a paper cut on your finger and you have a Band-Aid and then it's awful to try to type? This is a good hack for that as well. Hack number three is creating default text styles. If you're like me, you probably have set fonts and colors and sizes that you like to use with pretty much every document. Maybe you're not like me, but that's what I do. That's the yellow color, yellow for cowardly. Rather than having to apply those settings every single time, you can actually save them as your default. So here's how we're gonna do that. I'm gonna start by formatting the text the way I like to have my titles. So I'm just gonna type the word title, but it can be anything I want. From here, I'm going to select the text. I'm still on a big Poppins kick, so I'm going to select extra bold, and we're gonna make it size 24. Okay, that looks pretty good for my title. From here, I'm going to come up to where it says normal text, it's my styles. Click the drop down. Hover over title and I want to update title to match. Now, if I go back to that drop down, you will notice the title looks exactly like the title that I just created. And I can repeat that process for my subtitles and my headings. So I'm gonna just put uh, subtitle and then heading. And then we're gonna do like main text. So for my subtitle, instead of going Poppins extra bold, <laughs> we're gonna go semi bold and we're gonna go size 20. Okay, that looks good. Once again, I'm gonna select where it says normal text, hover over subtitle, update it to match. For heading, we're gonna go Poppins medium, and we're gonna go size like 16. I'm gonna come to normal text, hover over heading, update to match, and then for my main text, we're gonna go Poppins light, and we're gonna go size 12, and we're going to stay where it says normal text and update it to match. So I now have set up these styles, even if I delete them, and let's say I type example text, 
Right now it's in that like main default style. I can very easily switch this to one of the other styles by highlighting it, selecting that drop down, and I can make it a title or I can change it to the subtitle and it's just a much faster way but we can also set it as our default. So that way when we open up a new Google Doc, it already has those saved in there for us. In order to do that, we're gonna select that drop down again, come all the way down to options, and we're going to save as my default styles. It says that they have been saved. Just to test this out, we're gonna open up a new Google Doc, so docs.new. So now from here, if I select that drop down where it says normal text, you will notice all of those settings are already in place. Hack number four is the outline feature. This is one of those things you've probably seen, but maybe weren't sure how to use. Within my Google Doc, you'll notice this little icon. This is my document outline. If I click it, it's gonna have a little sidebar and it shows me the outline, which is currently blank. As I add headings to my Google Doc, they will automatically populate here. So just to show you what that would look like, we're gonna put example heading one, example heading two, example heading three. I mentioned they will auto-populate. That is once I apply that heading style. So I'm going to highlight all three of these. I'm gonna come up to my text styles and I'm going to apply heading one. And now you will notice over on my outline, they are automatically there and they also are hyperlinked. So as I add text, so this is example text, and we're just gonna like move it all the way down. If I click on heading two, it brings me down to that section of the document. So if you use headings in order to organize your Google Doc, whether it's for lesson plans or meeting notes, this is a really quick way in order to navigate to different parts of the document and just keep it more organized. Now, if you don't wanna get fancy with all of those heading styles and you're like, Michelle, I just wanna type a document, but I do want to be able to easily navigate, you can actually utilize something called bookmarks. So I'm gonna come down here and add bookmark example. So in order to add a bookmark, I'm going to come to insert and then I'm gonna scroll all the way down. It's at the bottom. You might miss it if you're not looking for it. I'm gonna select bookmark. You will notice it puts this little blue flag and it has named it bookmark. From here, I have the availability to copy this as a link. Here's where this is super helpful. If you have a really lengthy document and maybe you wanna draw someone's attention to a certain part of it, or you want when it opens up to go directly to that part of the document, you can use the bookmark feature in order to do that. So if I copy this link and I paste it in a new tab, it's going to not only open up the Google Doc, but it's going to bring me to that section. So to model this for you, I have just moved it down to its own page. That way you can see the difference. I'm going to click that bookmark, copy the link, open up a new tab, paste the link, and now it took me directly to that part of the document. The rest of the document is still there, but instead of having to scroll down and find that section, it took me directly to that bookmark. I think this is especially helpful for parents and if you have lengthy documents, whether it's related to the curriculum that you're teaching or various unit files that you have, permission slips, forms, all of that, this can be a really easy way to bring their attention to the exact part of the document that you are referring to, whether it's in an email or on a school website. Hack number six is kind of along the same page. It is creating a table of contents, which once again, just helps to keep it organized, but also makes it easier to navigate. In order to add a table of contents, I wanted to go at the top of my document, so I've just moved my cursor up, and I'm even gonna hit enter and move that heading down. From here, I'm gonna select insert and write down by bookmark. You might've seen it before, there is table of contents. And I can choose to either have it be plain text where it's just gonna generate a table of contents using those headings that I have, or I can have it with links, which is my preference because it makes it much easier to navigate. So I'm gonna select the links option. You will notice it automatically took the text from those headings and created it into a table of contents. And these are all clickable, so if I click Example headings three, it will take me directly there. But I can extend this table of contents to other links as well, such as that bookmark link. So for example, if I come up under example heading three and I could type bookmark example, even though it looks like it's linked, 
When I click on the other ones, I can see the link appear. If I click where it says bookmark example, nothing comes up because I haven't linked it yet. So I'm gonna come down to where that bookmark was. I'm going to copy the link, come back up to my table of contents, highlight that text, right click, choose insert link, and I'm going to paste that bookmark link. Now, when I click, it will take me to that bookmark section of my document. So once again, if you have a lengthy Google Doc for curriculum or other materials, this is just an easier way to try to navigate to those different parts rather than trying to scroll down and find what you need. Hack number seven, which actually has a bunch of little hacks within it, is changing the document design. I just wanted to show you a few ways you can really customize your Google Doc. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of my outline and I'm going to select File and Page Setup. From here, I can change the orientation from portrait to landscape. I can also change the paper size. So if I don't want it to be a standard eight and a half by 11, I can choose from these other options, but I also can change the page color. So if you are using Google Docs in order to create a flyer or a poster of some kind, you can change the background color. So for example, I could use this light blue. When I click OK, it's going to apply that to the document. Another thing I can do related to the document design is add borders around sections of text. Now, I've always kind of done a workaround with this using a table and then making the fill color of the table white and just having the border around it, but there is another way to do it. So let's say I wanna add a border around where it says example heading one. I'm gonna highlight that text, come to format, and hover over paragraph styles. This will look just like those different text styles that we saw in the other dropdown. It's just another way to get to it. But I also have this borders and shading option. If I select that, I can choose whether I want it to be a full border. So I could select each one of these different sides, or I could have it be just the top and bottom or even just the bottom. For now, I'm gonna show you what all four sides would look like. I can change the border width. So maybe I'm gonna choose one and a half points. I can change it from a solid line to a dashed line or a dotted line, and I can change the border color and background color. So let's do a black border with a white inner background. We're gonna click apply, and it now has put that rectangle around the text. Of course, I could center the text if I wanted to, and just to show you what that would look like without the full border, I'm gonna come back to format, paragraph styles, borders and shading. I'm gonna turn off all but the bottom border and I'm gonna make the background color none. So it's gonna put just a black line under my text and it's just a way to kind of fancy up your documents. Hack number eight is changing the orientation of a single page. Yes, you can mix and match orientation, so portrait and landscape within a single Google Doc. In order to do this, you want to start with your standard. So we had portrait set up, right? I wanna to come to the page I want to change to landscape. So let's say I wanna change this second page. I want to select everything on that page. So I've just clicked and dragged in order to select everything on that page. I'm now going to come to format, page orientation. And instead of applying it to the whole document, I wanna apply it to just selected content. This is how it's different than page setup. Page setup is going to apply it to the whole document. This is a workaround to do it for just that page. I'm gonna select landscape, click okay. So now I have just that one portrait page and followed by a landscape page. Hack number nine is inserting drop downs, building blocks, and drawings. Now, I previously have shared about the drop downs and the building blocks in my new Google features you missed in 2022 video, which I will link for you down below rather than going into it again in this video. But I do wanna show you the drawings feature. So the term drawings within the Google world really means like a blank canvas where you can add images and text and kind of format them and it will insert it as one single image within your Google Doc. Wow. Did your baby draw that? So I wanna insert this drawing in the heading one section. So I've put my cursor there. I'm gonna select insert, hover over drawing. And if I already had one made in my drive, I could select from drive, but I'm gonna select new. And it's gonna open up this new dialog box and notice the transparent background. This is like my blank canvas. So from here, I can insert images. So I'm going to insert a picture of French fries. I'm hungry, if you can't tell. 
Okay, those look good. I'm gonna select them, insert them in. It'll take a second. Okay, from here I can resize. I can rotate it around. I can also add text boxes so I can add like a label. These are French fries. Okay, I could add in lines and arrows and scribbles so I could even like draw a little arrow here to kind of point to it. We'll shade that in a little. Cool, I could change that color to red. I can do whatever I want on here. <laughs> then once I am done, I'm going to click save and close and it's going to insert it in as an image within the Google Doc. But from here, I can always double click, reopen up that box and make any edits that I need. So I mentioned that scribble tool. That's also a really cool way to add in like a signature to a Google Doc. So I'm gonna go back to insert drawing new and I'm gonna select the scribble tool under line. So it's at the very bottom. From here, I can just use my cursor in order to like draw freehand. If I'm using like an iPad, this is much easier with the stylus, but I'm doing my mouse. So we're gonna just do the best I can. I'm gonna add an M. Notice each time I let go, I have to like restart again. So after my M, I've got, and there's my signature, cool. I'm gonna click save and close and it's going to insert it into the Google Doc. And finally, hack number 10 is to use a template. Now I've navigated just to the main Google Docs website, which is just docs.google.com. From here, you will notice this template gallery. I have all these different templates that I can pull from. So I can click here and scroll through. I've got resumes, letter templates, different even like lesson plans. If you scroll down to the bottom, they have some that are kind of geared toward teachers, education, posters. So there are a ton of different templates that I can start from. So I'm not maybe starting from scratch every single time. But if you have a G Suite account and your administrator allows it. Now, when I say administrator, I don't necessarily mean your principal. I mean, whoever is in charge of like the Google for Education account within your school or district, there has to be a certain permissions that is allowed in order for this to work. But if it is allowed, you can actually submit templates and they can then be added into like a school database of templates to pull from. So it's a really cool way to share templates with coworkers or team teachers. I will put directions on how to do that down in the description box so you can kind of play with it and see if it will work for you. But if you don't have that option, I do wanna show you a workaround. Let's say I wanna share this Google Doc as a template with my coworkers. Not that I would ever do that with this, but you know, we're just pretending here. I can always come up to share. I need to give it a title. We're gonna call it example template. <laughs> Click save. And from here under general access, I can choose anyone with the link, but I can leave it as viewer. That way when someone else opens it up, they can see the document, but they can't make any changes. From there, you would instruct them to make their own copy. They would just go to file and click make a copy in order to save it to their drive. Or if you wanna get even fancier, you can create a force copy link. That way, when they open the link, it automatically prompts them to make a copy. So in order to do that, we're gonna copy the link we just made. We can either open up a new tab or I'm just gonna come up to this one, paste the link, but we're gonna delete the last part. So everything after that slash, so it starts with the word edit. Edit, question mark, USP equals sharing. We're going to backspace all of that. So it now ends with the slash and we're gonna type the word copy. Now, if I use this link, anyone I share it with, will automatically be prompted to make a copy of that Google Doc. Just make sure you leave those original sharing settings as viewer rather than giving them edit access. That is it. Those are my 10 hacks for Google Docs. If you're interested in more, I will have videos linked in the description box for 10 Google Slides hacks, 10 Google Sheets hacks, and 10 Google Calendar hacks that you can check out as well. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.